And joining me live in the studio is Andrew Clennell. Andrew, a big focus today on this migration amendment bill. You've got some more news on that. Yeah, there is going to be an inquiry tonight. I can confirm that. The government is going to grant the opposition's wish. And we should see Department of Home Affairs officials front senators on this. It is the government's belief the opposition will have to support this legislation and they expect it to go through the Senate tomorrow. It is extraordinary legislation. It provides that those who won't willingly go home when the government wants to remove them will face a mandatory minimum jail sentence of one year, up to five years. And it also allows the government to declare countries where people can no longer get visas from if they're a national from those countries. There are exceptions, for example, if they have close family here or are dual passport holders. And our mail this morning is that we're talking about Iran and Iraq. Won't take their detainees home, so their citizens won't be allowed in the country. Now, to have a look at what sort of effect this will have, our producer Cam Redden for us has got the numbers of humanitarian and visitor visas from these respective countries. That's how many were for 22, 23. You saw 2,000 humanitarian visas for Iraq and 174 for Iran. And when we look at the visitor visas, it's a much higher number here for Iran. It's about 12,000 and about 798 from Iraq. Obviously, there are Iranian and Iraqi communities in Sydney and Melbourne in particular. So it's a drastic measure. I know during COVID, the borders were shut full stop. But what the government's proposing here is effectively shutting the border to two countries unless those governments change their stance, Kieran, when it comes to removing detainees. And this is all brought about by high court decisions, which have meant that the indefinite, ma indefinite mandatory detention the high court is seeing as illegal. Now, we know the minister's briefed journalists a couple of weeks back in relation to this, and uh, in a way they put out the solution first... A month later, sorry, they put out the problem first. A month later, they give you the solution. They were working on it the whole time, I am told, Kieran. And they just needed, they just needed uh, that um, uh, to, to, in their view, line it up in terms of it being legally right. Because, of course, these things could well be the subject of high court appeals as well. I'm not sure which way the, the opposition will go in question time. This would be a natural way, the migration thing. I'm sure that will feature. But I think this vehicle emissions uh, issue will obviously also play a role, this uh, back down by Chris Bowen and, and the fact that the opposition thinks they're on a winner on that, on cost of living generally. I think those are the sort of three areas we'll see question time focus on. And no doubt we'll hear from Andrew Giles, who's been under fire, except this time he'll have a proposal to outline which he thinks will uh, solve, help solve some of this detainee issue. We might uh, bring up the pictures of the House of Representatives. There's a division underway, Andrew, so question time hasn't kicked off yet. This is a division in relation to what we've been talking about, the Migration Amendment Bill, as introduced by uh, uh, Mr Giles, Andrew Giles, this morning. Well, they're trying to get it passed before question time, aren't they? But you can see there... Uh, both sides of politics seem to be voting for it already. So there you go, get it through to the Senate. That's where the crunch comes. Yeah. But, but what I've just outlined or revealed now is, yes, the opposition's got its wish for this short, sharp, someone said to me, dirty uh, Senate inquiry tonight where they can get all their questions answered. And then they pass this legislation, which many, I'm sure, will, well, certainly the Greens will, will describe as draconian, but it is what the government believes is required if the High Court is going to say that indefinite mandatory detention when someone can't be removed is illegal. That would lead to the release of hundreds of detainees. We know we've got this case with the Iranian man called ASF-17 coming up next month, and that's the rush to head this off. A lot of it just appears about deterrence, Kieran, really, to deter governments from not taking detainees. Let's see if that works. Nose 12, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. The call to the member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Sorry, one, 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 before I give the call to the member for Warringah, the question now is this bill be now read a third time. I'll put the question. Those opinions say aye. aye. Against no. no. The ayes have it. No have just it. Just to correct what I was saying, the, you can see there the opposition is not voting for the bill. They're just not showing up. That appears to be what's happening there, doesn't it, Kieran? But the, the Teals are voting against. 
We're a bit, I certainly saw Kylie Tink voting against there. And the government's voting for, obviously, their bill to go through. The opposition, they're not voting against. We're going for a vote on the third reading. This is Azali Well, stable. I understand under the resolution, the standing orders have been suspended to enable this to occur. Respectfully, Mr Speaker, we've passed the terms of the, stand, the resolution. We've gone beyond the terms of that resolution. Well, as a result of the resolution, the stated questions now are being followed. So we've done the agreements to the bill. Now we're doing the third reading, which I've called the division for, and the clock is running for one minute. Once that's concluded, we shall then move on and call the clerk. Lock the doors. Extraordinary this, isn't it, Kieran? You've got Peter Dutton there waiting for question time, not able to get in there and ask any questions because the government is acting with such haste to try and get this detainee legislation up. The eyes will pass to the right of the chair and the nose to the left, just in... Clarity for the House. Yeah, it looks like the opposition is going to bill. vote. They've members obviously had some of their members in there, given the original vote had 93, 93. in favour. There must so have been some in there, yeah. They so all go to the division. They're waiting for question time. They're probably doing question time strategy in the line. Peter Dutton and the others who have arrived now for question time have moved to uh, the eyes side, those voting, it, voting in favour, along with the, the government, and then we're going to get up and have question time very shortly. At the end of this division, as Andrew said, it's been responded to with uh, a fair bit of haste ahead of the Easter break. Now, the other thing you touched on, Andrew, is this announcement made by the Energy Minister, and he had on that that platform at that news conference, Tesla and Toyota. So some sort of compromise with a, a big part of the industry that was concerned about their vehicle emission standards, but now he's placated them, he's made some compromise, he's watered it down. Will it inoculate the government politically? That's the question. No, I don't think it will, but it might help a little bit. The I mean, the government talk about moved. jamming everything in no, the, the last couple of days order. before we have a month out of this place. This is what often happens. The you'll see it in the mid before a midwinter break. A uh, you'll see it at the end of a year. You the rarely see it at this time of year. But that, it was they're trying to get vote. the migration done, the car tax compromise, and Bill Shorten's going to have some NDIS legislation cracking down on people who are ripping off the scheme, but also changing arrangements when it comes to the states. And he spoke about this in the caucus. He spoke about premiers complaining about this, and he said this is just the way it goes, as I understand it. members could move amendments and vote on them. When it came time... And basically, to remove some of the barnacles ahead of the pre-budget period so that the government can focus on selling its budget. Yeah, that's, that's the motivation, isn't it? Look at Adam Bant blowing up here, the Greens leader. He's saying, you're not letting us do our amendments, as I understand it. understanding order 154 for the reconsideration of the third reading of the bill for the, for the, the bill to be reconsidered in detail is not allowed to be put then the government will have just breached its own resolution that it put to the House that gave the members of the crossbench the right to move an amendment and have it voted on. And so that is why the motion under 154 should be reconsidered, or if not, I call on the government to commit to allow the, what they said they would do in the motion they put to the House and allow the, the debate to be reopened so the member for Warringa can move the amendment that she circulated in good faith exactly in accordance with the provision that the government asked for. I understand the Leader of the Australian Green and the member for Warringah's point of view. As I said earlier in my remarks, I'm unaware of the arrangements that were put into place, but under the resolution for that the House has taken and the time limits and constraints that was not able to occur, that is why we're in this position now. So we'll just continue with the division so we can deal with the question before the House, which is that the bill be read a third time. Yes, the member for Warringah. Mr Speaker, respectfully... Try to get the this problem bill through with before that question that time so we can have question time, and it isn't happening at the moment. ..their consideration in detail amendment. They had already gone past the 140 deadline of the, 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 um, the procedural motion of the government. So 
if that was the case, that it, when I sought the call to move the consideration in detail amendment, then it should not have been possible for the opposition to move theirs either. So is this, are we saying that despite the wording of the motion, the government itself forced through the House, there are two standards in this place of our democracy and that there will only be some times that the government and respectfully the chair will comply with the procedures that have been put before the House? Yes, the Leader of the House. Thank you to standing orders. Therefore, standing orders that have been quoted were suspended for that time. There were time limits imposed. Once they were brought to the attention of the Chair, we've gone into the procedures that are now in. Look, I understand the points being made, but the resolution of the House that was undertaken, we're now in this position. So we're just going to complete this division. I'm happy to talk to members separately after the, the debate has occurred and we shall move to question time. If members can the remain there until we complete... Trying to move things on, the, opposi the uh, opposition voting with the, the government on this bill. You could see the crossbench, though. They're ropeable, absolutely. Zali Stegall and Adam Bant not happy, talking about two standards for the members of the House, and uh, Zali Stegall tried to move an amendment. The opposition did. She wasn't able to, and she's, uh, she's not happy. They've been traded out of things, haven't they? And... Uh... The arguments around this, from their point of view, will be, what's the rush? You knew about this problem a month or two ago. Why don't we have more time to consider this legislation, to seek to amend it, to make it better legislation? The government's argument is that it needed to get the proper advice, cross its T's, dot, dot its I's, so the High Court won't throw out this controversial detainee legislation. But the legislation was drawn up on Friday, as I've reported this morning and not presented to the opposition until this morning, had to go through Cabinet on Monday. Could there have been more time for the opposition to look at it? Well, it certainly sounds like the crossbench believe there should have been a lot more time to consider this being jammed through now. The third reading is when it passes. It'll then go to the Senate. And as I reported earlier, Kieran, the expectation from the government is the Coalition will vote for this, and they've agreed to their Senate inquiry tonight in relation to it. It does seem in undue haste, however. It's not like this detainee issue hasn't been going since December when the government had to release criminals, murderers, pedophiles because of the NZYQ High Court decision. It looks like the government just wants to restrict this thing to one or two days and jam it through. And uh, you'd hope that for their sake they'd get it right if they're going to uh, conduct themselves in this manner. It's about as tough as a Labor government gets on this sort of issue. It's a marked departure from the activities of the Rudd government when you think about how Operation Sovereign Borders uh, had to be set up after that. Uh, it had been... They dismantled the John Howard Pacific Solution uh, situation. Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, obviously keen to ensure that the government is seen to do everything it possibly can to ameliorate the effects of these High Court decisions which are allowing questionable immigration detainees out to the community. It's uh, an issue now where security and the economy, they're the two main things for the government as they try to consolidate things in the 12 months before the election. In this 24 hours, they want, they want to get rid of this barnacle uh, deal with this issue and then it's all about the budget Andrew it's all about cost of living it's and about trying to take away some of the economic vulnerabilities that they had including what was generating a bit of momentum the coalition's argument about a ute tax now it was put to the head of Toyota at this news conference on that emissions vehicle standards the deal was done by Chris Bowen the head of Toyota was asked is it a ute tax now he said no it's not but uh, the government hoping that that argument doesn't resonate with voters and that they can knock that one on the head. Because in middle Australia, that also is something which proved to be a weakness and for the government, something they wanted to deal with. Nose 13, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. I call the clerk. Uh, the Greens and Teals voting against.
Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the Migration Act 1958 and for related purposes. I give the call to the Leader of the Australian Greens. I just have a question to you further to your earlier ruling and the comments from the Leader of the House. Um, I'm advised that the amendment that was moved by the Coalition was moved at 1.45, contrary to the resolution of the House, and was therefore put in breach of the resolution of the House. Um, I ask your, given that that was the same ruling, according to the Leader of the House that was relied upon to uh, prevent the member for Warringah moving her amendment. If that is, I seek your advice about whether that is the case, and if, in fact, the amendment moved by the opposition was put in breach of the resolution of the House, and after that, whether um, it is appropriate to have Order. that recommitted. Uh, the resolution of the House and the decision of the House was made uh, when that vote was taken. The time had not been pointed out, but the, once that had been passed and the time was pointed out, the remaining stages of the bill was, was approved. But I shall report back to the member with more information.